Welcome to another episode within our Versus series here on Learn, Grow, Invest. In this series, what we try to do is match companies that are in a similar industry, similar market, hopefully. It really depends on how we're able to access these companies, as in where, where they sit, right? And we just try to see how much we can learn about both, compare some key areas about both to get an understanding as to how the businesses kind of stack up against each other. Now, what we try not to do, and this is a, a disclaimer here, because we don't want to, um, we leave it to you rather to determine which company is better by the information we present. Now, I, I don't necessarily want to say, you know, company A is better than company B. We don't, we don't want to do that, but we leave it instead for you to kind of have as, you know, information when you're doing your own analysis to understand how the companies stack up against each other. It's an interesting series. We've done a couple of them. Be sure to check out um, the ones we've done previously. We've done Fesco versus RPL. We've done Image Plus versus Elite. And this is our third in the series. So yeah, let's jump right into it. Learning is the key to successful investing. And who doesn't want to invest in some way? Here at Learn Grow Invest, we focus on financial education, all with the aim of sharing our knowledge on personal finance, investing, and building wealth. We do this on the foundation of our faith in God. If a more holistic approach is what you need, check out our Grow Faith-Based Financial Coaching Program. Find out more about us at learngrowinvestclub.com and follow us on all social media platforms at Learn Grow Invest. All right, so welcome back. Let us get started here. So we have in this one dollar, well, access financial versus dollar financial services. And you're seeing here the two CEOs, you uh, Campbell on the left for access financial, recently appointed CEO. And we have not been able to speak with him yet, unfortunately, that interview hopefully is pending soon. Kadeen Mayer's CEO of dollar financial, we've done, um, you know, a lot of content covering dollar. So, um, fairly you know familiar in terms of what a company does etc of course we're going to use information for the series based on what is what is accessible for both so i'm gonna i'm not gonna you know introduce anything that would not be you know easily accessible for for persons right so hopefully that makes sense so um i have to say this of course um since we're talking about companies here that the information that I'll review is for discussion, education, entertainment, and illustrative purposes only, and should not be constru construed as professional financial advice, solicitation, or recommendation to buy or sell any of these securities or any other security that may come up during this conversation. All right, so let's look at a little bit about both companies. We got this information from their website. I always think it's interesting to see how companies represent themselves or speak about themselves. And we're gonna use the most recent annual reports for both to look at uh, their, their loan portfolio, a little, some more details about the company, et cetera. Uh, so let's start with Access. So it says here, Access was established in the year 2000 and was listed on the junior market of the Jamaican Stock Exchange in 2009. So well, after being in operation for nine years, they listed on the junior market. So they've been on the junior market for 14 years, right? Uh, 2023 will make 14 years for them. So they've been on the market for a little bit. Access is one of the leading providers of personal and business loans to Jamaica's microfinance sector. Access operates through an island-wide retail network of 18 branches, right? Um, and I remember Access... They were very, very big on, I think, payday loans back in the day. I think that's how I first heard about them. Uh, my understanding of their business model is they have a lot of partnerships with like companies. So if, for example, you need a, a, a personal loan, Access will partner with the company and so on to have that loan delivered. And I'll, I'll get into the business model a little, a little bit later, but that was my first memory of Access, right? Um, it says here, since inception, Access has distributed, has disbursed in excess of 15 billion in loans to the microfinance sector, a sector which contributes significantly to economic growth. The company's um, micro business clients operate in the service, manufacturing, trading, and agric agriculture sectors, 
and they'll actually have a breakdown in their annual report as to how much these sectors contribute to the overall revenues for the company. Uh, let's look at Dollar Financial now. It says that Dollar Financial Services Limited was incorporated in 2009 and commenced its operations in October 2014, right? So 2014, 2000, a big gap there. So in terms of um, the amount of time in the space, access has been around for longer. The company is a subsidiary of the private equity investment company that's First Rock Private Equity Limited. On June 12, June 15, 2022, so just a, just a little over a year, uh, Dollar Financial Services was listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. We lend as a part of Dollar's ultimate goal to provide progressive financial opportunities to those with a vision to succeed. Dollar has been providing easy access to better financial services by serving the unbanked and underbanked population. Their innovativeness has provided efficient solutions in meeting the needs and satisfaction of their customers and a focus on growth and excellence in all aspects of the business, right? So dollar here, and this is, you, you, you're noticing a very key piece for dollars, you know, business model or approach or focus here. And you're seeing the serving the unbanked and underbanked population. So what they're saying is they're going after persons here who maybe are not a, a part of the formal system. Um, maybe it's an, an entrepreneur who needs money for his business. Maybe it's, it's in those areas where maybe, um, I guess it would be less competition. So to so to speak, that's kind of what I'm getting from, from what I'm reading here. Um, yeah, so let's leave it there for now. In terms of what I could identify in terms of products offered, uh, both through personal loans, both through business loans, though the makeup of both would be different. And we'll get into that a little later. Um, Access has on its, its website their business center and Dollar has a... a subsidiary called Ultra Financier, which focuses on high net worth clients. And um, yeah, that's something that if you want to learn more about, we've actually, you know, interviewed their CEO here on this channel. So be sure to check that out. Let me try and find you now the information relating to the business model for both companies, right? So let's look at Access Financial's website here. So both through personal loans, and this is accessfinanceonline.com so their business center so personal loans business loans i think those are pretty straightforward to understand but let's talk about um the business center let's see what it says here right so it says supporting small businesses so get the financial support oh let me zoom in here i don't think you can see that very clearly i think that's a lot better yeah so it says get the financial support for your business with a loan customized to your every need their business loans are ideal for micro, small, and medium-sized businesses operators who operate in agriculture, manufacturing, trading, and services sectors, right? So they're kind of being very specific about the areas that they're targeting. And I guess they would have assessed that, you know, these markets maybe present great opportunity. And so they're they're kind of focusing there. It doesn't necessarily mean that they, if, if somebody comes from an industry, they're not going to lend them. I'm, I'm not going to assume that's the case, but this the, these are the areas that they're singling out here, right? Um, it says here their business loans can be used for working capital support or for the purchase of fixed assets. And the loans range from 10,000 Jamaican dollars to 1.5 million. Loan repayment periods range from one month to three years, right? And then you can apply for their business loan through a website. I've actually never clicked on this before. Let me see where it leads you. If 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 I have to create an account, I'm probably gonna go back. I don't necessarily wanna do that here. Okay, all right. So I wanted to see kind of what the requirements are and it shows their business team here. All right. And yeah, that's it, right? Let's look at Dollar Financial's website now. All right, um, starting here for a second. Okay, there we go. All right, so they're showing their directors here. Um, their sales team. All right, I wanted to look at the products, All right? Loan products here. So we're seeing here down the bottom on the site, dollar personal loan, microphone, the elite, and their annual report, I think, 
it breaks this down pretty well, so we'll look at it there. Um, so let's do that instead, right? Let's go back to the PowerPoint for a little bit. So we, we just looked at Access's business center, and later we'll talk about Ultra Finance here and how it fits into Dollar's business model. In terms of market cap, uh, quite um, a difference here. So Access's market cap is 6.3 billion. Dollar's market cap is 22 billion. Uh, the shares outstanding for Access, 274 million. Shares outstanding for Dollar, 2.5 billion, right? So again, you're seeing a big, a big difference there. Uh, current price, uh, $23 for access as at the end of trading today, and dollar financial, $2.28, right? So very big difference here um, in terms of the first three eras. Months listed, we spoke about that earlier. Access has been listed for at least 150 months. I uh, just did kind of like a quick math. I think they may be listed, you know, maybe November, December of 2009. So I just kind of did the math from 2010 forward. And then IPO price, right? I thought this was interesting to see. The IPO price for Access was $18 per share. And then for dollar, it was $1 per share. So when you look at this in terms of IPO price versus where the current price is, that kind of puts it into perspective um, versus dollar's current price versus their IPO price. So I thought it was an interesting thing to see. All right, we're going to look at revenues for just the last two years. I wanted to keep this one kind of concise because of um, how long dollar has been listed versus access. I didn't want to kind of compare periods that we don't have information for for dollar. So I just use the last two years for revenues. We have access um, doing in excess of, I believe it um, was maybe 1.8 billion. In, in in 2021, a dollar did just a little bit under um, 500 million here. And I'm gonna confirm from, from the annual reports when we go there. And then for 2022, Access did 1.9 billion, um, just slightly under two, 2 billion. And dollar we saw did for 2022, um, I think it was about eight, maybe seven, 700 million thereabouts. Um, I don't have the, the I, I input the figures, but I don't remember. I probably should change the type of chart here, All right? Uh, but again, we're going to drill down into that information from the report. Uh, profit before tax. I didn't want to do profit after tax because, of course, dollar currently has a 100% tax break. So if we take profit after tax, it's going to, I think, be skewed. So profit before tax is what I, I thought to look at. But 2021 access... Um, was this seems to be maybe about 360 million thereabout. A dollar was um, under 200 million, and for 2022, um, I believe it was 580 something million. And, and we're gonna confirm these numbers, guys. Please forgive me here. What I'll maybe do is put um, put the the number here in the future so that we can get it exact, right? I apologize if, if I'm misquoting any of these numbers, right? So let's look at their loan portfolio now, right? Um, we have, let's start with, with Access. So this is your 2022 report. We actually did a review of, of, um, of Access a few months ago. So be sure to check that out. Um, all right, let me see a question here from Shellyan. You're saying you don't understand Access Business Center. Are they in real estate, leasing office? But so what it seems to be, right? Um, it seems to be just their targeting of small business, Shellyan. That that was my understanding of it. Now, of course, I might be wrong. It th these are the kind of things where I would like to interview the CEOs directly, but. Um, Based on the fact that you're raising it, let me see if their MDNA mentions anything about the business center. Um, let me just scroll through that and see. Um, this is their MDNA for their 2022 report. But my my understanding of the business center is that it just focuses on the different areas of the of the of the small business industry, the agriculture, the different areas that we mentioned before, and they're targeting loans to them, right? The 10,000 Jamaican to the 1.5 million, 
So these sectors you're seeing here, the agriculture, services, trading, and, and manufacturing. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I thought that too, right? So your um, Shelen is saying, but they have business loans, wouldn't that be the same? So I think that maybe, maybe, maybe they have special um, provisions for these industries. That that is kind of what what I'm thinking, right? Um, okay, so let's let's look at what we have here. And Orville is saying that access did a stock split. Yes, I remember that as well. Yes, that is true. So um, let me just do a quick search for that now, because um, I do know their price was higher. Access financial stock split. in 2010 okay so that 10 to 1 stock split um okay interesting let me check ticker here five years all um yeah orville the price i'm seeing here was as high as 56 dollars is there a point when the price might have dropped significantly um because it seems if, if if they did the split in 2010, then that would be shortly after they listed, right? Um, did they do any other split after that? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so, right? Um, yeah, so it seems like they split sh shortly after listing a 10 to 1, um, and then it seems it made it, made its way all up to $56. Um, I know it's a little bit hard to see here. Let me see if I can full screen that. Um, right, he right here. Let me do all. Yeah, $56. Sorry, guys, if you're not able to see this. Um, yeah. All right. Where am I? Yeah, so so we're looking at the loan, the loan portfolio for both companies, right? So on the personal side, um, for for between 21 and 22 financial year, they saw kind of marginal growth in their in their personal loan portfolio. It seems to be about expense in in thousands. So this is about 400 million. I guess you would not necessarily consider that marginal. I guess depending on how you look at it. Um, and then they would have seen growth in the business sector. Again, they, they single these out. Um, so they have the area that grew the most for them would have been the trading here. Um, and yeah, right. Um, and then they showed, I, I really thought this was a good breakdown to see this. So they showed you within one month, one to three months, three to 12 months, and so on. I thought that was very helpful when we were doing the review. So let's compare that now to dollars loan portfolio breakdown. So this is their 2022 report, and this is their breakdown, right? So loans, loan portfolio by sector. So real estate and construction, business processing industry, manufacturing, tourism and hospitality, trucking, haulage and transport, retail industry, other services. Now, what I'm saying here, I'm sure both companies lend to every industry. Um, but it seems access may target specific industries, maybe based on, it could be that they have maybe access or a partnership with some, so, so, so let's say they have a partnership with the JMEA, for example, that works with mainly manufacturing companies, and it may make sense for them to have specific allowances for that type of business. That's kind of what I'm thinking, but I don't know, right? And then it shows here loan categories, in terms of business loans versus personal loans, right? So unsecured business loans at the time had about 70% of the makeup um, and then unsecured personal loans, 14%, secured personal loans, 9% and secured business loans. So, so business loans here would be 77% and the personal loans would have been 23% in terms of the makeup, right? As opposed to, to access that we saw where I mean, the personal and the business were were, were almost the same, right? 4.6 billion, 4.9 billion, right? So almost half and half. Whereas with 
with dollar, it it's they, they do mostly business loans, right? So that would is something that's kind of skewing towards dollars focus. Um, it seems to be that they focus on maybe entrepreneurs that because when when I was running my own company, well, when I was I'm still running my own company now, but when I started my first company and I was looking for funding, it was extremely hard to get funding, right? Because banks would say to me, I don't have collateral. And I said, well, I'm a, I'm a startup. I need funding to grow. And it's a, well, you either need to secure the loan or um, I'd have to be able to show or prove that I have the capacity to repay the loan, right? So at the time, I did, I, well, I didn't necessarily know about access in that way when I was trying to seek funding. I was trying to go through the commercial banking system. Uh, but it seems like a company like Dollar would probably be a little bit more flexible in that regard. Now, again, I don't know the processes for either, right? So I'm not trying to, 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 to speak to that. But it seems specifically just based on, on the intro that we read that Dollar is focusing on that, that specific segment, which means I'm assuming that they're requirements are a little bit more flexible in terms of those who are unbanked, right? All right, so that's the loan portfolio. And we looked at we we looked at revenues a little bit. Um, so I just want to get in that exact number because I did mention it. So for 2021, uh, dollar financial 395 million. Uh, for 2022, 747 million. And we, we looked at that number for, for access being in the billions, right? Um, so this is the business loans for access. Um, March is the end of their financial year. So that's why you're seeing it saying March here. And you're seeing the breakdown based on the different um, sectors here, right? So they're really at the trading side of things grew for them. Uh, services contracted a little. And then this... No, not services, it's services. Manufacturing grew quite a bit, right? So they kind of moved away from, from manufacturing um, or maybe the clients didn't have the same demand. Um, so yeah, that's what we're seeing there, right? Um, let's go back to this here. So stock price, um, let's talk about that a little bit. No, and I'm using the platform Ticker. If you're interested in using Ticker for yourself, just check out the link in the description of the video. You'll be able to use it. It's a tool that I have a subscription for that allows me to, to kind of view the history. So for example, Access has been um, you know, listed for a number of years. I'm able to see quite a bit of history. So I'm seeing up to up to eight years of history here in terms of pricing, right? Um, so it's a very, very good tool for that. Let me see if I can zoom in though so that you can see more of the screen. So um, in terms of the last eight years, Access has given a price return of about 44%. And I mean, again, we're not really comparing the price in that way because, you know, Access has been listed longer, right? So dollar for the last year, they would have listed, had that initial run up after listing so it's actually down over the last 12 months down about 18 percent um in the last 12 months so they would have gone to a high of uh, almost four dollars here in september so they would have listed in june june july august september so about three months after went as high as almost four dollars but as we showed there today they're about two dollars 23 right so they have it has gone down since um in the last 12 months right um, and, and another cool thing that I like um, about just kind of showing what I what I would typically go through here. So um, what TIC allows me to do is see the financials for the company. I can look at the, the different statements, the key ratios, et cetera, right? So we're not going to look through that right now, but I just thought it'd be interesting to show you, right? Um, so that's a stock price. I believe um, Arvel said, that access has had a stock split dollar has not done that um and so we know access would have had i think actually having fewer shares on the market is actually better for them um 
in terms of that, I guess that that supply being limited, whereas dollar has more shares on the market, right? So that's something to 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 consider. We were able to compare just um, the return on asset and return on equity ratios for for access and dollar. So return on asset dollar is actually um, you know trending higher in that regard. So their return on asset is just about under twenty percent, and return on equity for dollar is close to sixty percent, whereas for access it's below 20 percent all right so that's what we're able to see there uh let me go back to let me stop sharing for a sec bring up something else right here all right so i wanted to go through the mdna a little bit for both just kind of get a feel as to where they were coming into the start of uh, 2023 in terms of the 2023 financial year. So I'm going to read through both a little bit and see if we can get an understanding as to where both companies are headed, right? Uh, that's what we're we're interested to understand. But I do want to hear from you who are watching, uh, what's your take on both companies, right? How do you feel about access? How do you feel about dollar? Um, and which one do you think has, let's maybe look at it in the next you know, 24 months, you know, um, 12 to 24 months, which company do you think will have uh, more growth during that time, right? Because, of course, um, I don't necessarily want to look too long-term. We know the state of the, the, the economy that we have right now, and uh, based on what we've seen, we haven't really heard much um, from access uh, to this point. So we're not really sure where they're headed, where their focus is. So that's what we're going to try and get from the from the annual report. And uh, yeah, so let's kind of go through that now, see what we can glean from it. Um, let me see here. All right. So as usual, uh, let me apologize to anybody who's watching this who may be new. I'm going to do a bit of scrolling because I'm going to try to pick out things that I think are interesting to share. Uh, but if you want to access both reports, I can place the links in the description or I can find it on the JSC's website, right? All right, so their financial performance, I did mention one point, almost two billion for access, right? Um, so we see where they're they're leading in, in that regard in terms of revenues. Um, are they? Let me double check that one for the for 2022, right? Because when we look at dollar for 2022, okay, yes, right? Um, I just wanted to confirm. I'm kind of confusing the six months for dollar 2023, right? Um, so total expenses here, net profit after tax. Um, 438 million as at the end of 2022, right? So earnings per share of 1.6 of a dollar 60 cents per share. Um, I say Orville saying dollar getting all the love now, but access will have their day, right? So that that's interesting because um, you know, dollar I think has managed sentiment pretty well now. The sentiment um to me, Orville actually has not um I, I guess stock price hasn't caught up to the sentiment i would say meaning i think dollar has strong sentiment because they're more visible they've given you know specific efforts to be visible in the space right that's very clear it's a part of their strategy very big on marketing and you can probably even tell from the difference in in terms of annual reports that as i'm going through it dollar tries to showcase their team, showcase their initiatives, et cetera, right? So um, clearly very, very, you know, dedicated to marketing, PR, et cetera. For access, you can't really connect with them in the same way because they haven't spent the same amount of time marketing, right? So um, I do notice I'll kind of throw this in, in terms of what I've seen where the companies that are seen as a little bit older seem to shy away from consistent marketing. I don't know if it's just how business was done <laughs> back then. I mean, you can let me know your thoughts here, but 
I've seen, I've noticed, right? Companies, for example, listed more than five years, more than 10 years, even though they're publicly listed, they're not very visible, right? Um, you don't really see a lot of announcements, a lot of those kind of, I'm sure things are happening, but you don't really see it resonate in that way. Um, and what you're seeing, maybe um, I heard somebody say that uh, marketing visibility is more of the younger CEO's approach. Um, I'm, I'm not necessarily thinking that that's the case because, for example, I look at a company like Spurtree. Um, it's not necessarily a young CEO, but the company is dedicated to being visible and marketing, right? So, um, but yeah, I, I think, I think, so Orville, tell me what you think in terms of access. What, what do you think um, when you say they'll have their day? What do you mean in terms of, you know, the market attention, in terms of stock price appreciation? Let me know what, what you think there, All right? All right, so net loans and advances, so 4.51 billion in, in loans, um, loans and, and advances, total assets, total liabilities, stockholders' equity, all of that good stuff, right? Um, and they have the highlights there. <laughs> So Shelly and saying, I didn't know Access was listed until Dollar had their IPO. I also thought Access was a Kingston business. So, so that's the thing, right? Um, for their footprint, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it might have been, I think Proven had a fair amount of ownership in Access. And so it was done through Proven, if I'm not mistaken. I might be wrong, but I think when I was researching their company, that's what I saw, right? Um, so access has been around for a while, has been around for a while, All right? Um, so let's see here. Net loans and advances based on statin and GDP disclosures, Jamaican economic experience growth of 6.1 of 6.4%, which compared to has shown good recovery, right? So that of course would impact both companies. Improvements in the economy also resulted in increased demand for labor Right, so companies usually share this as a background on the economy, so you understand the frame framework in which they're operating in. Um, let's see here, the improvements in the economy also resulted in, read that already, access strategically manage its credit exposure based on its perceived risk evaluated by industry and grew the loan portfolio by 10% year over year. All right, so this, this manages credit exposure um, re remember when we looked at the industries in that they're, they're focusing in and the marketing sector might have, have reduced. I don't know if this has something to do with that, All right? Um, total assets increased. Um, the Jamaican economy, IMF has projected growth of 2.5% and inflation of 8.5%. Uh, Jamaican dollar. So all of that stuff, um, you can check that out. The microcredit act. So, so, so access and dollar, I believe are both, um, what do you call it? What, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, oh my gosh. They're, they're no accredited. <laughs> I don't think that's the word I'm looking for. Right. Um, so they've applied for a micro credit license. I believe them and Dollar, they've gotten their licenses. Um, let me see here. So this is five year summary. So we've seen, you know, five years ago for access, um, let's look at operating revenue. So 1.7 billion five years ago, 1.9 billion five years later, right? So I don't, I mean, that growth rate to me um, could have been better in terms of um, maybe opportunities to, to grow since they have been around longer, maybe has um, greater opportunity to grow there and they've been around for a long time, right? So that to me, 200 million over five years, I guess in my mind, I'm comparing it to, I guess the kind of growth we have seen on the dollar end, right? So that that's something to look at. We are comparing both companies, right? Um, expenses, uh, 1.1, billion to 1.4 uh, of course this is an area that you don't you don't necessarily want to see grow as fast um Kashwin is asking you know or saying maybe the business has plateaued that's interesting right um i don't know i don't know right um 
it would really, really be good to hear from the CEO to see what the company has as its, you know, strategic focus or the plan. I don't know when their AGM is coming up. Uh, maybe I'll 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 check that out for for the 2023 financial year because their year ends in March, right? So their their AGM for the 2023 year should be later this year. It would be good to to attend and hear what their strategy is, right? Because um, yeah, it's it's an interesting concept cash win i'm not sure not sure um i mean the numbers might be um leaning towards what you're seeing right um in terms of net profit after tax five years ago it would have been 422 million five years later 437 million right so again not really much growth in that area actually would have gone down during during the heights of the pandemic um which i think would have been actually a great opportunity to grow right so so um they had a dip in 2020 so i don't know if it's a case where for example it depends on their model if they have an in-person model where they had stores didn't necessarily invest in technology to do loans online when things were closed down maybe their business was was impacted greatly right um so you're seeing that fall off there right um so net interest income 2022 actually is lower than 2020 here non-interest income 2022 lower than their peak for 2020 right um and they're breaking down their non their non-interest income here um Net fees and commissions increased by four million or one percent as a direct result of increased disbursements. Their money services fees and commissions increased by uh, twenty nine percent during the financial year. Devaluation of the Jamaican dollar and other income decreased by five percent year over year. Right? Um, or or really saying I think access needs a re needs a remodeling fresh ideas new products and business lines i mean again it's just it, it would be good to me it's a lot of in terms of information right so I'm, I'm just basing it off of what I'm seeing here. Um, okay. Operating expenses breakdown. We're not going to focus on that for now. Let's see if we can go to their outlook, right? Um, let's see that. Yeah, as, as I said, we, we went through this before. I really like this breakdown. I think this is very good. I bro broke down the business loans there. Allowance for impairment their funding portfolio and uh, payment of dividends, etc. cetera. Um, so we did mention their stock price at a high of $56 back in 2018. You're seeing that here. I really like this, this breakdown, by the way. I really appreciate it when companies do that. Let me see if they say anything about Outlook here. Did they mention that? I'm not seeing that, right? So maybe I, I missed it, but I'm not seeing Outlook for them. Usually that comes at the end of the MDNA. and um, All right, so um, Shelly and I see they're sharing more about their business center here. Let's see if we can learn anything new about it. The Business Loan Center is a new division of access. The center was established to increase focus and convenience for micro businesses in Kingston, St. Andrews, and Catherine. The establishment of the center reinforces their commitment to growth in the microfinance sector in Jamaica, right? So that's their business center, right? So as I said, it maybe would have been a very specific focus. That's what we're seeing here, right? Let me zoom in so you could see as well. But that's, that's what they're seeing there, all right? And their branch locations there. Okay. All right. Let's look at dollars now. So 
So we're just going through the MDNA, as I said, just just looking at what we can glean in, in terms of what would have impacted the business and their outlook for 2023, right? So Dollar here is saying that the recovery of the tourism industry and the expansion of goods industry are supporting Jamaica's continued economic growth. Tourism is a significant contributor to the country's economy. I'm going to scroll through that. The recovery is expected to give the country's economy a significant boost, opening up new opportunities for businesses in a variety of sectors, including microfinance. The goods industry, which includes agriculture, manufacturing, construction, and mining, is another important sector. There may be obstacles to overcome, inflation and pref pressures both kind of mentioned that. Um, and despite these obstacles, they're optimistic about the future. Um, Jamaica has demonstrated resilience. I think I'm maybe more interested in the outlook. So Dollar is also present in, in Guyana. Um, I would say if you want to understand a little bit about, about their, their operations in Guyana, you should maybe should check out the earnings call we did with them. Let's look at their financials here. Um, as I said, we're just looking at the last two years for dollar based on how long they've been listed. Assets, liabilities, uh, loans, net of loan loss provision, that's 1.7 billion. Total loans, 1.7 billion. You know, comparing that to what we saw for access, so access definitely has um, more loans dispersed in that regard. Um, cash flow. And some of the ratios we looked at before, right? We looked at the return on asset and the return on equity. And am I only seeing a part of it? Yeah, okay, there we go. So I'm just going to read the outlook. We looked at the loan portfolio for dollar. I think this may be, okay, yes. That is what I'm looking for. They have a forward looking here, right? So as a company... Looks ahead, the strategic direction and sees significant growth being projected for 2023. So we're kind of seeing that play out for a dollar in what their six months for 2023 look like. So we'll try to see the six months for access. Of course, this review needs to end in about 15 minutes. So I'm not going to spend much time on it, but just to see how they're kind of comparing for the six months, right? But wait, do we have the six months for access? I don't believe we have access for six months. All right, so I won't do that. Um, considering the significant growth in the past and the anticipation of what's to come, the company will continue to place effort on returning value to dollar communities as they build, uplift, and seek to improve the lives of their citizens. Increased growth also comes with the need for system and process improvements through technology and innovation, as well as structure to ensure sound corporate governance. Um, that's good to see. They're speaking about the impending data protection act, which I'm sure companies will have to prepare for as we embark on their journey as a licensed microcredit institution. That's the word I was looking for, licensed, right? So both them and access are licensed. They are tasked with ensuring appropriate and timely reporting and disclosures to ensure you, their shareholders and, and potential investors are remaining informed, right? Um, so let me see here. So went over the loans in terms of loan portfolio analysis. Um, okay. So what they're noting here is is the um, what I would have mentioned. So they're currently benefiting from from the um, not having to pay any corporate income tax. So for the first five years, they're not having to pay, which will definitely boost their profitability. Um, you know, access is far past that, of course, being listed for 14 years. All right. So I think that's it. Let me see. Let me just have a quick look at what we have. Um, I'm just looking at set of statements for third quarter ending December 2022. All right, so I'm not going to go into the sixth one, but it would definitely be good to do that, I think, just to kind of see how they're, they're advancing. Now, um, some things for access that would have impacted them last year, they would have had, you know, some, 
I'm looking for the best word to say, but I had some press last year in terms of, you know, kind of some some um, some issues that would have made its way in into the public and the, the company kind of seemed to take a step back to kind of figure things out in terms of that. There was also the rumor of, well, I say rumor because, of course, um, it never actually came to pass, but there was talks about dollar, you know, potentially acquiring access. It caused a big, it, it, it actually caused access's share price to go up, I believe, to $28, $29 on the news. I think that that actually bode well for dollars stock price as well. I believe that's why it would have went up maybe close to the $4. Of course, that has, you know, access made a very concerted effort to, to kind of squash all of those kind of talk. They're not interested in that. That's not something that's on the table right now, et cetera. And things have kind of died down. Uh, dollar hasn't said much about it. Access hasn't said much about it. And so it was kind of awkward for a little bit. And then both sides kind of moved on, I think. Um, it would be interesting, though, to see both take a strategy of potential acquisition, right? Because, because of the microcredit act, I thought I would have seen from both some sort of consolidation, right? Um, you know, acquiring the smaller companies, kind of, you know, absorbing them, you know, obtaining their customers, because there are a lot of microcredit um, companies in the country, right? And I'm sure not all of them have taken the steps to get their, their license, right? So to me, at some point, they would either have to go out of business, stop operating or whatever, right? So those, those, those portfolios would pretty much be for sale, right? That's, that's kind of my take on it. So I thought after that microcredit act for 2021 was, you know, passed and confirmed, we would have seen that, right? Because I think, you know, consolidation in the space would be good for visibility of what's happening in this space, right? Because these two companies are publicly listed, we don't really know what's happening in terms of um, the, 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 the smaller companies out there. So that's an interesting concept, Gordon, right? So Gordon's asking, you know, ISP finance acquisition, that's one of those companies that we just don't hear from, right? I know their, their stock would have halted down the last couple of days, right? So I don't know what's happening there. Um, it would be interesting, right? I thought that would have been an interesting company to look at. I believe ISP had the worst performing year last year on the stock market, right? I believe I saw that somewhere that they had their their stock um, lost the most for 2022, right? So th that would certainly be interesting, right? But I think both of these companies have an opportunity to grow via acquisition it's in it's in inorganic growth of course but i think it's an opportunity for them based on the size of the the portfolios maybe size of the client base etc dollar definitely seems to be in growth mode where they're trying you know very very aggressively to grow their their portfolio grow their clients etc expand to new territories um and it could be that access is probably focused now on maybe getting control of the reins, maybe some of the, the challenges that they had last year and those maybe still being worked out means they have to kind of focus on, well, if we can't necessarily grow right now, let's focus on maybe maintaining our, our current profitability, manage and kind of streamline some of our processes, et cetera, right? There's, there's nothing wrong with that. They're at a different stage. So it just... It would really be interesting to see how both companies do for the next 12 months, right? So I personally think that uh, the path, or at least the communicated path, is clear for dollar. I think Access um, would need to communicate what their current plans are. Um, let me see if I can find their most recent report and if they would have released anything in terms of outlook right um i'm just looking specifically for the outlook um, okay usually that comes at the start 
Asha position. Okay, All right. I would love to hear from the company, the CEO, to kind of understand um, what what their focus is, what their strategy is um, for the for the um, you know going forward, right? So, all right, guys. So I believe that's it. Um, hopefully, you found this review helpful. Um, let me know your thoughts. As I said, which company do you think will have the the better performance over the next 12 to 24 months because it seems like at least um, there is something I think that needs to happen in this space in terms of uh, consolidation. I think that um, it's also interesting to me as well how both companies are able to grow um, within the state of the economy that we're in. Now, what, I, what I mean by that is... Um, as interest rates go up, are we going to see maybe more more defaults? Both companies are kind of operating in 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 an environment of high risk. Now, um, usually there's collateral, of course, um, and that kind of thing. But that does that that doesn't necessarily mean that it's easy to now liquidate that co that collateral if it is that the client doesn't pay, and if it is that we are going to continue to see high interest rates, high interest rates may mean higher cost of products and services it may mean slower biz it may mean slower business for the entrepreneurs who have to pay these bills so they for the for the individuals that have to repay these loans and will it have an impact on these companies right so from what we're seeing dollars business is growing at 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 a at a fast pace how long can they sustain that growth um, the question was asked by someone has has access kind of plateaued. Um, we'll see, right? Because they did have uh, lower levels of profit for 2020, 2021, but it kind of seemed to recover a bit for 2022. It's just it's just gonna be interesting to see, I think, right? So uh, that's a review of both companies, guys. Let me know what you think. I'm thinking of uh, reviewing. For some of the next versus series, um, I'm trying to think of which ones, which one I had in mind next. I think learn versus one on one would be a good one to do next. But let me know. I thought I'd look at the financial sector a little bit first, though. Um, I'm trying to think of what other companies we can compare. Yeah, let me know your thoughts. Let me know which companies you think I can look at for the versus series going forward. And yeah, thank you all for watching. Thank you for being here. Be sure to check out. Um, if you're not, if you haven't turned on notifications, you'll notice that we're not doing as many promotions on social media anymore for content or in groups or via email. And that's because what we're doing is kind of refining that strategy. But we don't want to be spamming posts for content, if that makes sense, right? So we want for those who are on YouTube, to turn on notifications, you'll see our content when it comes out. So that in itself is like a marketing, you get the notification, etc. If you don't turn on notifications when we release a new video, you'll see it in your feed when you open YouTube, which I assume most persons open YouTube daily, right? Like I do, right? Um, so we will definitely need your feedback as to what you think we should do next. And yeah, um, I'll see you in the next video as usual. Thanks for watching. Learning is the key to successful investing. And who doesn't want to invest in some way? Here at Learn, Grow, Invest, we focus on financial education, all with the aim of sharing our knowledge on personal finance, investing, and building wealth. We do this on the foundation of our faith in God. If a more holistic approach is what you need, check out our Grow Faith-Based Financial Coaching Program. Find out more about us at learngrowinvestclub.com and follow us on all social media platforms at Learn, Grow, Invest.